What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff, and for you today I'm checking out the Lupo Kickass panel, yes that really is what it's called, LED light for video use. As always this is not sponsored content so buckle up for a no holds barred review from a videographer's perspective. It's time for me to shut up and roll the intro. <laughs> As ever, I've linked everything in this video in the description box below, and your support means a lot. Definitely hit that notification bell next to your subscribe button. It means a lot to me, it means you won't miss a video. Thank you kindly. So what is the Kick-Ass Panel? So, the Kick-Ass Panel, sorry, just to address the elephant in the room, I have what's called a Middle English accent, which means I pronounce it ass and not ass. Just so you know. So the Kickass panel, it's a full RGB panel with a very bright 2100 lux at one meter. It has excellent color accuracy ratings of TLCI 98 and CRI 96. Really good, they're just different measurements. And it shares a lot of the same tech from the way more expensive Lupo panels, such as the Action panel, which is around a grand, and then the Super Panel, which is around three grand, depending on which one you choose. So it has some real pedigree there. It weighs 530 grams without a battery, and it can be battery or mains powered. So let's check out the features. The headline of the features is it has three color modes. Firstly, the CCT mode, which has a color temperature range between 2800 and 10,000 plus you can adjust the tint from magenta to green. Secondly, it has RGB WW mode, which is red, green, blue, warm and white mode, and it has HSI, which is hue, saturation and intensity mode. It also has preset colors and special effects mode, including lightning, cop car, TV, black and white TV, and loads more demos of them to come in a bit. So with all of its different modes, this little light has a lot of ground covered. But what about the build quality? Well, in terms of the construction of the Kickass panel, Lupo say it has a reinforced molded technopolymer construction, whatever that means. Plastic, I think. It also has a small but bright digital display on the back and three buttons to change modes. It also has three knobs which have different functions depending on the mode you're in. For example, when you're in the standard CCT mode, the top one is brightness, the middle knob is color temperature, and the bottom one is green to magenta tint. The Kickass panel comes with a diffuser which screws on. It works well, but it wasn't what I was expecting. It's a little bit flimsy and tends to move around a bit. It's definitely not any kind of substitution for proper diffusion, but I like what it does, so I leave it on. Next, I wanna show you what the Kickass panel can do, and I'm gonna start by replacing my key light up here, which is an Aperture 300D with a light dome, and I'm gonna replace it for the Kickass panel with an umbrella to see how it looks. And there we go, it's a fairly different style of lighting because honestly, I was using the Kickass panel for my hair light and I had it up there before, so I've lost that. And on the Aperture light I had up before, I had a light dome with the honeycomb setups. It's a very different style of light. You can see it spilling over the top and around here, and it's slightly less soft, but I can work with it, it's good. Of course, we've got less diffusion and less power, so it's probably not so suitable as a key light, but it'll do in a pinch. Now, let me show you what else it can do. Now the Rays have two on, and here's Diaz batting 259. And Kikuchi from the set delivers, and the first pitch is grounded towards short. Could be two, fielded by Crawford, the second out to turn to first, is not in time. Lisa here, a bit high that stash. So here we have the rear side of the kick-ass panel, and when you turn it on, it does take a little while to kick in. The digital display is quite nice and bright, it's very easy to see what's going on. The default mode for me is usually the CCT mode because that's the mode that I use the kick-ass panel for most often. The dials down the left-hand side I found really lovely and smooth, however the buttons underneath the display I found 
not always the most responsive. Within the CCT mode, we can control the intensity. And the really nice thing is you can use it on say 2% if you want to, if you just need a tiny, tiny touch of light in your scene. As I mentioned, the color temperature goes all the way up to 10,000 and down to 2,800. That's a really, really wide range. And of course, something that I find really, really useful, and that's the green to magenta tint shift. And it's just such a good feature. You just saw I demoed a couple of the effects within effects mode, but here you can see there's a whole host of others. There's also black and white TV, paparazzi, lightning effect, explosion, fireworks, fire. They're just a lot of fun. Okay, now let's go through the pros and cons of the Kickass panel. Firstly, the pros, and it is decently built, albeit plastic. I always want companies to move to more sustainable materials, but I understand that plastic is appropriate. I found the battery life to be really good. I mean, it's not as if I've timed it or anything, but it just seems to keep going. The quality of light from the Kickass panel is lovely, especially when you use some good diffusion. The built-in effects are brilliant. I honestly don't know what I would use them for personally, but I can see these being really useful for filmmakers. A really nice thing when you buy the Kickass panel is Lupo have included a ball head, which actually is suitable for the product. It's big and it's chunky, and it drives me nuts when companies supply products with crappy, cheap, ball heads. There's not a lot else out there which gives you this kind of performance for a relatively low price tag. And onto the cons. I found the menu system takes a bit of getting used to. It's not the most intuitive. I also wonder whether the display could be better. Something higher resolution would have been nice, but I understand this probably is an extra drain on the battery. But still, whilst I'm wishing for things, the clip on diffusion I found a little bit dodgy. It moves around quite a bit, but I still like it. It works well. I noticed there's no battery meter on the unit. It's only a small emission and honestly doesn't matter that much because I found the battery life really good. The kick-ass panel doesn't come with a battery. Don't get me wrong, I understand why a lot of people have the Sony MPF batteries already, but still would have been nice. Finally, to my opinion, and I really like the Kickass panel, I've got it just up here. It's become my new hair slash fill light for this angle. Lupo advertised the Kickass panel as an on camera light, which you can do, but I will say it's a fairly chunky unit. And of course, it only gets heavier once you add a battery. In terms of value, I'd say the Kickass panel is good value. It's not what I would call, you know, absolutely jaw dropping but it does deliver pretty huge functionality for the price. So if you need a small light that can do just about everything you need it to, the Lupo Kickass panel is probably one of the very best options out there. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about the Kickass panel in the comments section below if you want to. I'm down there as much as I can. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Just hang in